She says she hates her budget. And she's here to explain to all of us why. The governor of the state of Washington, Christine Gregoire. Welcome, Governor. Good to see you, Dave. Thank you. First question is, uh, is it time to admit that the Republicans were right when they said that the budget was unsustainable two years ago and four years ago and six years ago? Were they right? Should you have cut then to avoid having to make these painful cuts now? You know, there's a lot and too much, I might add. Monday morning quarterbacking, uh, rear view mirror kind of stuff going on. But let me just share with you, it's not as if we're the only state in the nation that this has happened to. 48 states this is going on right now. I just met with all the 29 new governors, and the number one issue is how do we get through no, the economic true, but I mean, crisis. Forget the four other, other 48 states. Could we in Washington State have been the exception had we simply cut the budget uh, six years ago and uh, and not adopted programs, which which quite a few people felt could not be uh, sustained in good times and bad. Sure, Dave. Let's talk about what we put money into. What did you put? Why why did why did the budget go up? Something like what is it? Thirty five percent. Well, it goes up because caseloads go up and and things that healthcare is a yeah. dramatic problem. So what was that money for? Um, early childhood education. We put in eight hundred million more dollars into K through twelve than had been done by any of my. Uh, predecessors. Uh, we put in more money into higher education. We really invested in child abuse and neglect to make sure that our kids are protected and they get visits when they're at home or in a foster care setting. Those are the places that we invested. But you also uh, paid for salmon on the on-ramps and uh, the 1% for art program and the various boards and commissions, stuff like that. Why wouldn't? Why not cut those things? Uh, those uh, those have been there forever, and the, over the last two years, I have been proposing dramatic cuts in boards and commissions. The fact of the matter is what we're doing now is r- transforming our state government. Everything is about timing. When this crisis hit, we get, began looking at what could we do about it, but let's be clear. Washington State did not create the crisis. This was done on Wall Street when it fell. It's been done in Europe of recent with Greece. Those are the things that we're challenged by, and so, too, are 47 of my fellow governors. Can you point to tangible evidence uh, that the increases in spending in the programs that were instituted when uh, the CAF was was relatively fat, that that's paid off, that, that kids are doing better in schools, that, you know, domestic violence is down, that these things are actually, that they paid off in a way? Um, you'll be, I'll be able to show you that because... There isn't a study in America that doesn't show if you give a child the opportunity to get early childhood education so they hit kindergarten ready to learn, the amount of kids who graduate from high school goes up. Teenage pregnancies goes down. Prison uh, population goes down. The number who go on and get further education goes up. So now we've only been doing this for the last six years. So no, because those kids are that young age still. But it's undeniable in all of the studies the results if you invest in early childhood education and kindergarten. Did people want this increase? I mean, uh, one of the st- stats I show I see here is the state employees increased by a net total of sixty one hundred since the uh, the governor uh, took office. What's what's been the benefit of those? Most of those are education. education. Most of those are Meaning not general government. A- a people in classrooms or uh, what support people? Uh, Probably be- both. I can't speak to that, Dave. It's both K through twelve and higher education. There's where the growth has occurred in the in the in the amount of positions in state government, really. And the only other place where it's grown, uh, candidly, I would say, is in child abuse and neglect and, and, and caseworkers. It's not because you've got all these people making $100,000 down in the uh, office. But, I mean, why not just go, why, why not try this? Just everybody making $100,000, yeah, cut their salary in half or something. You're not going to impact state employees. Uh, state employees, uh, other than doctors, don't make $100,000. I mean, you're talking about higher education. You're talking about doctors. You're not talking about, you're talking about some lawyers in the attorney general's office. You're not talking about general state employee. We're talking about the $100,000 people, you mean? Yeah. I mean, that's not the average state employee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so then just cut the uh, non-average state employee's salary. That would make people happy. So they wouldn't be able to say all the money's going to people uh, making these these, uh, palatial amounts of money. Okay. So let's talk about the state employee workforce because, um, you know, let's set the record straight from all the blaming and the finger pointing. Uh, In the four years of this recession, the next two and the last two, we will have cut 10,000 positions. That's what the private sector's done. The public sector's no different. 
State employees over the last two years have had an increase of out-of-pocket payments for health care up 20 percent. In the next two years, their premiums up 25 percent. In the next two years, their costs to contribute to pensions will be up again. Their pay cuts that they have now agreed to take, 3 percent. I'll put the sacrifice of these state employees up against any other public sector. I don't know. Look at the federal government. What have they been doing in the last two years? Receiving their cost of living increases and their bonuses and paid nothing more for health care. So let's be real about what Washington State employees are doing. They're stepping up. They're sharing in the sacrifice. Why? Because they believe if they do that, they can save programs like child abuse and neglect and foster care. And saving $330 million in all funds with this pay cut is going to do that. When you sat down with your staff and you're looking at this huge budget shortfall and you have your red pen out, what was your guiding principle as to what was going to get what was going to get cut? What what, what were you trying to preserve and what, how did you decide basically? We uh, began um, this summer. We began with a transforming Washington budget committee of about 36 people. I came up with eight questions to be asked of every state agency and every program. Questions like, is it a core service? Can someone else provide the service? Could it be privatized? Is Can a user pay philosophy be uh, a part of it? Uh, those are the kinds of, can we do it more efficiently, more effectively? Those are the kind of questions that we ask. And as we went line by line over the last two months, going through every program in state government.